These are the real stories of the patients, medical, and support teams of St. Joseph Mercy Health System, whose lives intersect for a brief moment in time to achieve remarkable outcomes. We bring hope. breath of fresh air. It's so simple. You breathe in, you breathe out. I'm Lila Lazarus. Breathing is living, but if your lungs aren't working right and the doctor says lung cancer, everything changes. Lung cancer is the leading cancer killer. And if the patient is you or someone you love, suddenly every breath becomes precious. It used to start with one rose. He would stop on his way home from work at Norton's up on Washtenaw and buy me one red rose. That's when we were struggling, <laughs> raising our kids, and, but he always brought me a red rose on Friday. And then, all of a sudden, we graduated into a dozen, and that made me even happier. <laughs> Don't ask for two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married 58 years. June, our first date. But uh, I've been in love with her since high school. It was just because I was a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy dearly. How could she help it? <laughs> yes. He is the best husband, the best father, and he's just a tremendous grandpa. We go up to Crystal Mountain with Molly and Bob and the kids. We're not skiers. Hot tub. <laughs> yeah, we do the hot yeah, tub. Yeah, we get in the hot tub. <laughs> He means the world to me. He's my life. He's my best friend. I don't know what I would do without him. But John and Monica had no idea that John was about to face the biggest health challenge of his life. Hi, my name is Kim DeMauro. I graduated in the class of 2011 from Churchill High School. Kim DeMauro never planned on giving keynote speeches. She'd prefer to be with her friends. Do you know what color you're going to get? Not really, do you? I'm really not complicated. I enjoy the little things, the simple things. There's me, Destiny, and Carly, and we are like three peas in a pod. They're my absolutely two best friends in the world. I've lived in Livonia my whole life and haven't been to a whole lot of places. I want to go to Italy one day, for sure, because I'm Italian, and get my motorcycle license hopefully one day, and get a really big truck, and have land with horses. I'll go riding with you. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Okay, and then how do I move into second gear? Do I just keep popping that? Yeah, pull it back in, and you push it down with your heel. We like to ride on my motorcycle whenever we can. Whenever she's pretty sure none of her friends will see it. <laughs> you know how that goes. And up until 18, Kim had never been sick a day in her life. I'm never sick. I don't think I've even ever had the stomach flu, ever. She's never sick. Pops up all of a sudden with uh, we thought was pneumonia. I had a really bad cough, and that was it, and then I got a fever. So we took her to the doctor and like, yeah, you know, we did the CAT scan, and her, her right lung is, is pretty much all black. And we're going, okay, well, let's get her the antibiotics and make that go away. Shortly thereafter, her lung collapsed, and that's what started everything rolling when they realized that it wasn't just an infection. And I went to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and he thought it was just a really bad infection, like, in my lymph node, like my actual lymph node was infected. And then he did the chest x-ray and CAT scan and that's when he found the growth in my lung. And then they sent me to a lung specialist. They came in and said, well, your daughter has cancer, lung cancer. And by that time, you know, I wasn't even really hearing what they were saying. All I know is that they kept saying that it was here and it was here and it was here. I didn't even think it was possible for an 18 year old to get lung cancer. It was hard. I mean, I had a few teardrops, but other than that, I was, I, I think to like, I held it strong together, but everything like flashed before my eyes. Everything I wanted to do just like slammed me in the face and was like, well, what if? As a mother, my first thought was is, why her? Why isn't this me? This is supposed to be happening to me, not to my 18-year-old daughter. So you went from never being sick to lung cancer? Yeah, pretty much. It's a big jump. Moms are supposed to have some magic ball or some wand. You know, kiss it and make it better. 
there was no kissing and making this better. I was going to do everything in my power to make sure that she got the care she needed. I wanted my baby taken care of. Meanwhile, John and Monica are worried about John's heart. His chest feels tight. So cardiothoracic surgeon Dr. Manak Sud runs all kinds of tests. Everything was going all right you know, until one of the tests indicated I had a spot in my lung. What did you think? I didn't know I had it, no. Oh, I was devastated. Uh, Just devastated. And then when we had the biopsy and it came back, cancer, that's the last word you want to hear, is cancer. In fact, I was quite surprised when they told me I had cancer of the lungs. Where John Tebold and Kim DeMarro's stories connect is here. They both seek treatment for lung cancer at the St. Joseph Mercy Cancer Center. Here, all of the specialists meet you in one location, creating a precise battle plan on the same visit. From a medical perspective, time is extremely important. You want to halt the growth of whatever's growing immediately. You want to stop this cancer. You want to stop what's happening and get to things as quickly as possible. Time is very important. The hardest part of being a cancer patient is the waiting. It just took away one less stress that they accommodated me to make sure I only had to be in one place and to make it all easy. They treated us like family. You know, that's, that was the thing that was amazing to me. And now Kim, at just 18, is trying to understand what doctors have told her. He's like, Kim, you've got cancer. And he's like, I'll give you a minute to digest it and talk to your parents. And I'm going to go get Lara, who's going to be a nurse navigator. The patient who's here from Port Huron yes. is in room six. A nurse navigator is a lot of different things. Sometimes a nurse navigator is your best friend. Sometimes she's your doctor's assistant. Sometimes she's your person on the inside. My mom was crying and my dad's like patting my leg like, you're going to be fine, you're going to pull through this. You're strong, you can do it. And I just kind of sat there like, wow, this is really happening. How common is it for an 18-year-old to have that kind of mass? These days, age is just getting younger and younger and younger. Within past year, I have probably operated on three or four 18 to 25 years old with lung cancer. If you've gotten a cancer diagnosis, you're afraid, you want to know what's going to happen next, you want to meet the people who are going to be taking care of you. Then Lara came in and she was like, okay, so this is what we got to do, and I was like, Let's do it. She told me what had to be done and I was ready. I was ready to kick cancer's ass. I like to tell patients that it's our job to help them spend more time fighting their disease and less time fighting the system. You know how when you go to a concert and you see the people sitting in the front row and you wonder how they got those seats and you wonder well maybe they know somebody and you wish you had like a favorite cousin who worked for the band that could get you on the inside. I think of nurse navigators as someone who is like your favorite cousin on the inside. Truth is, Lara's more on the inside than any of her patients could ever imagine. She knows exactly what they're going through. The doctor called me in the evening and said, you have a huge mass in your left lung and it looks like lung cancer. Yeah, can you help me with some homework? Sure. Okay. What we got today? Uh, we got science. Science? All right. No, the opinion one, that's me. This looks really yeah. good. It does. The vegetables mm -hmm. need more time, though. Lara Blair's children are still learning what their mom does for a living. What's a nurse navigator? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Schedules? No, and work with the patients to get good doctors and to get their appointments scheduled when they need them to be. Really? Yes. It's huh. not just schedules. Well, why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> knock, knock. My name's Lara. These rooms are filled with newly diagnosed lung cancer patients who are here for an evaluation. One of my jobs is to get doctors from room to room where they need to be. So just to sort of control the, the flow and make sure that everybody gets what they need. I try to make sure that patients are comfortable, that their anxiety level is at a minimum, um, and just to sort of be available to them for questions. How do you walk into the room and talk to someone who's just been diagnosed with cancer? It's a flashback. Um, I'm a lung cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2007, and my husband's also a cancer patient, so I know what it's like 
to sit in the chair and hear your spouse be told that they have cancer. I know what it's like to sit in the chair and be told that you have cancer. Lara and her husband were diagnosed with cancer nine months apart. First Bill with a rare cancer of the chest. You know, my first, first thing I thought of was, I was worried about my kids. You know, are they gonna lose their dad? Are they gonna, you know, are they gonna have to grow up without me? And, you know, it's just, it's just hard, it's really hard. Then Lara was diagnosed with lung cancer. She's, uh, she's my best friend. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine what life would be like without her. It's kind of hard to see them so weak, really. I mean, just the chemo does st so much to them. It's really, it's kind of hard to watch. It's kind of like a slow motion car accident. It's hard to watch. And the toughest part was definitely having to grow up when I did because of my dad getting sick and then my mom getting sick and having the two younger brothers, I really didn't know how to handle it. So how has this affected you? What have you decided to do with your life? I want to go into pediatric oncology and work with little kids and cancer. I think that if you go through something like this and you don't make good out of a bad situation, that there's no point in going through it. When I walk in the room and can say, I had lung cancer, I beat it, you can beat it, we're going to help you, it gives them a feeling of hope and empowerment. Because of his age and uh, because of his heart disease, he's really someone who would not be a, a great surgical candidate. Think of this as the war room, a team of specialists preparing to do battle on John Tebolt's lung cancer. When the communication has happened all at the same time, it you, you probably save 30 phone calls. Got a biopsy uh, and it was a non-small cell lung cancer. Um, the PET scan only showed uptake at this single site. It's a full lung specialist team, including medical and radiation oncologists and cardiothoracic surgeons, ready to launch John's treatment plan. So when a patient comes here, they'll get a first, a second, even a third opinion. Or a fourth and a fifth opinion, all at the same time. And so we talked about doing CyberKnife with him. And all agree, John is the perfect candidate for CyberKnife. Rather than open surgery, he'll undergo robotic radio surgery on this table. John lays on the table for less than two hours and a beam of high dose radiation is sent directly to his tumor. The only place that we saw cancer was at the tumor that we're treating right now. They said the only side effects he might have was tiredness and maybe a little rib pain. The uh, technicians were just wonderful and they made a nice little mold for me so I could lay uh, still without moving and I laid on my back and just laid there while the technicians had the uh, rays going. I just tried to fall asleep but they kept trying to wake me up because uh, every time I fell asleep my breathing got too shallow for the <laughs> for the system. He's actually being treated as we speak. What my team here is doing is watching his breathing pattern to be sure that his breathing is following a good regular pattern up and down. The CyberKnife delivers the treatment from over 50 and sometimes over 100 different directions pointing at the tumor. John needed four CyberKnife treatments. Today is his final one. But at this point, we still don't know if this is really working. The CAT scan is really going to give us our definitive answer in four weeks. So every reason to be optimistic, but we just can't know for another four weeks. Right. Here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How'd it go? Good, good, good. Tell me what you felt. I feel a little woozy, that's all. A little tired. I keep trying to fall asleep. <laughs> you know it's Friday, right? Yeah, right, it's Friday. What's that mean? I got to buy some flowers. I was impressed because no side effects. He said it was like lying there for an x-ray. Yeah. Pretty incredible. No sign. Oh, had no amazing. after effects whatsoever. He but came out of the treatments and we went about, did whatever. I went about living my life like I yeah. normally do. When he comes home with those dozen roses, what do you think? How much I love him. Just the little things like that that a person does for you means so much. Do you still need so, the chart or can I put it back in the door? I okay. adore the doctors here. All of them approach oh, really? patients as if they were treating a family member. There's no cutting corners, no shortcuts. It's always about what's gonna be better for the patients. They don't always agree, 
but they also challenge each other, they work together, their goal is always the same. That team is meeting to decide on a plan of action for Kim tomorrow. It's agreed. She needs immediate surgery. I was opening all my graduation cards for my graduation party and I, I got really sad and I was like, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be because I was reading all these people's well wishes and best wishes to me and I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. It's absolutely frightening to think that your life might be over um, or just to know that your life is going to change a lot. What was amazing is within two weeks of them diagnosing her, they had her in operation. Her tumor was stuck on her heart, stuck on her esophagus, so it was a very challenging operation. Throughout the day I was looking to see, okay, what's happening? Is she in recovery yet? And I saw Dr. Gupta and he saw me and just lit up. Big smile. He gave me just a huge high five and said, it went great. Dr. Gupta, my surgeon, was super cool and he was funny and relaxed and made me feel comfortable about getting half my lung taken out. He came in and said, this is what we gotta do, let's do it. He wasn't screwing around, and for that, I'm too thankful for words to even describe. And even Dr. Gupta said after surgery, he didn't expect to be in there as long as he was, but he was going to do everything in his power to make sure that this young lady was gonna go forth and have a spectacular life. And that's exactly what he did. Best prognosis, clear margins, and then we will keep screening. She had the right doctor. She had the right team of people, yes. But even the right team wants to be sure everything possible has been done for Kim. Dr. Stella, her medical oncologist, recommended that, okay, now I want you to go to Mayo, and I want you to just see what they have to say. So what would the Mayo Clinic say about her care at St. Joe? A lot of the doctors really wanted her to get a second opinion because of her age. Um, they wanted her to be seen maybe at Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic, that place was unbelievable. They agreed with everybody down here and that was good, made us feel real good. They were very impressed the way the operation was conducted and to the extent that I did the uh, operation, I actually had to transect her part of her heart to get a clear margins. The, uh, so from that standpoint, their comment was, usually we get these referrals as a second opinion, we're just, we have to do cleanup. And then we have to put people through more operations. But in her case, they said they're doing the exact thing that they will do. So that was a very reassuring and kind of, uh, you know, very proud to run a, such a multidisciplinary lung clinic. Even after receiving treatment for cancer, you're still worried. You're always questioning, is it gone? Is it back? Is it growing? Tell me what it feels like right now, not really knowing. I'm trying to ignore it right We're now. We're trying to be optimistic. I now get blood work and a CT scan every three months. If it comes back, it won't know what hit it. I think of it spreading, like, because everyone says lung cancer is super devastating and really bad. And just before the checkups, the pressure for Kim can be overwhelming. I was freaking out. I had, like, a panic attack at work, and I was like, oh, God. What if it's bad? What if it comes back wrong? What if there's even the most minute thing? And then I went in for my CAT scan and that was even worse. I was having like nightmares and Lara warned me about this. She's like, now for everyone it's different, but especially for that first one and it's gonna happen every time you go back in, you're probably gonna have these little freak outs. When patients start to fall apart, I can commiserate with them, but I can also tell them, you know what? this is what you need to do. And, you know, the response of, well, this person doesn't really know what it's like, and, but I do know what it's like. She's an awesome person. I think she did everything she's supposed to times a million. She made me so comfortable and made the whole experience a lot better. Delivering good news to patients is the ultimate reward for Lara. She understands what it means to hear you're still cancer free. What's the prognosis? Almost at the five year mark. Yeah, exactly. and uh, I just had one that was good. Um, hey. You know, yay, which is, you know, good news. So mm -hmm. it's been a year for me. We're just grateful to be watching our kids grow up. Just to be able to be enjoying the important moments in life, to be able to be here for that, yeah. for both of us to be here for that, yeah. is pretty, 
is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Hello, good afternoon. Morning. And for John, today's the day for his answers. We had a nice result with him. Almost 50% reduction with the first scan after treatment. He's doing great. He can head for his cardiac surgery. I asked you what it's like to be an 18-year-old with cancer. What's it like to be an 18-year-old and survive cancer? Even better. Like, I don't know. I just, I look at everything so much differently. I survived this. I conquered it. Like, there's got to be something more out there for me. She has such a positive outlook. Um, I don't have any doubts that Kim is going to do well at anything in life, um, including beating cancer. She's done remarkable. From the first day I met her to the day when I saw her a few days ago, giving her good news that we're still cancer free. I'm very happy that she's thinking about college. She's kind of moved on. And that's to how long cancer should be approached. 18-year-old Kim DeMauro is the keynote speaker at St. Joe's annual lung cancer vigil, telling lung cancer patients what she's learned. And through all this, I can honestly say it has been a blessing in disguise. I met wonderful people and did some great things. Through this twisted shape of fate, I managed to learn a little bit about myself. I'm not so lost anymore. I've always wanted to help people, to save people, and this just might be it. There's a different way that I look at her now because she has been through so much and she has earned that respect from me. I've been inspired to do something greater with my life, and I will, because nothing's bringing me down. So no matter how bad things get, I will always carry on, I will always fight. It's simply how I'm built. I'm too young to die. I got a lot to do in my life. Now cancer-free, Kim is living her life and living her dream, but with a whole new appreciation for every breath she takes. How you doing? I'm doing good. And John and Monica, they're breathing easier now too. All thanks to the remarkable care from the St. Joe's team. Let's take off. I'm Lila Lazarus. Thanks for watching Discover Remarkable at the Heart of Medicine. We'll see you next time. Hey.